In this video, I want to talk about inputting into FileMaker two physical addresses and getting back the actual driving distance between those two locations. Now I can see this being applicable in a wide variety of situations and understand that the distance that we're talking about here is not the distance as the crow flies, but the shortest driving distance option that is available on the map. Now in this video we're going to cover this solution at a very high altitude which means that we're not going to get under the hood with how the XML works. Now I am shooting right after this a detailed deep dive of how to parse apart XML within FileMaker and if you're looking for that video definitely check out our FileMaker Pro video training course. The link's right here on screen. So at a very high level we are leveraging Google's distance matrix service and it's available at this website right here. Now keep in mind that this service actually has a lot of options for how it can be accessed and not only that there are a lot of options for the type of data that you send to it and what type of data you get back from it. So you can read through this page in great detail if you'd like. Just keep in mind that I have customized this sample solution right here to take into account that we are driving not walking or bicycling between these two addresses and also that I'm using imperial units not metric units so I've made some adjustments here to the URL it's covered all in here and what's funny about this is, is if you dig in here and you activate some of the sample URLs that Google has in here is that for example this sample right here will give you uh, details between three different cities using a bicycle and the output language is French which is totally cool. So once again we've adjusted things over here in our sample to be a little bit more applicable to what we might need here in the United States. But this should work worldwide in a pretty straightforward fashion. So one of the parameters that you can pass to this is to avoid certain kinds of uh, road restrictions or things like that. So for example we can say avoid highways or avoid the tolls or avoid ferries etc. And that's one area that you can pass restrictions to. Also the travel modes I briefly mentioned, driving, walking, bicycling, and uh, transit, which I believe is like public transportation if I'm not mistaken. In fact right here you can see a transit mode, uh, bus, subway, tram, rail, etc. Now what's interesting about this is that this distance matrix API doesn't just give you the distance, it also gives you the estimated time. That's why they spend so much time trying to calculate the distance that you might walk as opposed to the distance you might bike versus the distance you might uh, travel in an automobile. Now also keep in mind that certain types of roads are only accessible to certain types of transportation methods. For example, freeways in the United States are not allowed to have bicycles on those freeways as well as pedestrians who are just walking about. So Google takes all this into account. It's pretty cool. Now I want to run through the script very briefly, show you how this works. I'm going to activate my script debugger and I'm going to bring it over here and then I'm going to simply uh, tell the system to run this script and it's the calculate distance script. Now this script is already run but let me step my fingers here and clear everything off. Now I want to point out very importantly up front that this script is written for its educational value. Uh, if you're more of an advanced developer then certainly you could see areas where you could collapse and consolidate the lines of code down to make it maybe two lines of code uh, for example but I am very explicit here in what I'm doing because I want it to be simple for people to learn so I'm gonna run calculate distance here it's gonna run this script now uh, conceptually as we run through the script it's gonna take the origin address here and our destination address here and it's gonna work through this section here and work through this section here and then finally over here to the end where we get the distance in a number field of the number of miles. Once again that could be in kilometers we just set it to miles uh, in our demo here. So uh, we started the script and the first thing it does is it's going to concatenate together uh, these fields here into this field here. And this is how Google wants to see multiple words and addresses put together in a single block of text. Google has algorithms that will dig this apart so I don't have to say the city is San Francisco and the state is California and the zip is this and that. It's going to figure that out all on its own because Google is pretty smart. Now it ran this line of code right here and you can take this apart 
The next thing we do is that we look for any spaces that might still be in here. The way we're going to communicate to Google is to run a insert from URL script step, which basically means we're going to run a URL. Well, spaces are illegal in URLs. That's why sometimes when you see me working in our training videos, if a field has multiple words in a field name, I'll frequently put a word and an underscore and another word. Well, Google doesn't really use underscores. They like to use pluses. If you check their documentation, they're very fond of replacing spaces with pluses. So that's what we do right here. Now, there are already some pluses in here, and that is from the concatenation of these fields, this field and this field and this field and this field. The pluses are arbitrary because Google wants a plus. It's not because we're trying to add those things together. This is not a mathematical formula. This is simply Google's way of separating things. So now we're going to run this command right here, and it's going to swap out any other spaces and change them to pluses. So I'm going to go ahead and step through. And notice now the spaces are gone, and we have just pluses in between each of the elements of the word. So we've done the origin address here, the originating address. And then we're going to simply do the destination address, which runs the same way. Once again, we get the initial concatenation together. Notice there's a couple extra pluses here because certain fields were blank, but it still put them in there. And Google seems to be able to handle this quite easily. It's not a problem for them. So I go down, it runs the substitute command right here, and it gets rid of the spaces. So we're going to go ahead and commit the record, save the record. The next thing we do is we, we're basically taking a calculation and we're formulating a URL and we're dropping it in here. Now normally we wouldn't go to the step of actually separating the URL and just displaying it, but I want you to see what's going on. So this here is the final URL that we're going to send to Google. Now you can take this URL, copy it, open a browser right here, and paste it in. And this is what you get back from Google. You get a block of text. It's pretty uninspiring. But if we run it down here, what you're actually going to find is that you get back a block of XML pretty straightforward. Now the rub here is that most of the time the script stops and people will try to figure out how they can get the mileage out of here because right here is the distance between these two addresses and here is the time it will take using automotive transportation. In fact I think you can put in here uh, with current traffic and it'll give you a time delay based upon the expected traffic levels from Google Maps and the traffic tracking feature which is pretty cool. So how do we get this information out of here? Well, that's where the next video is going to come in, and we're going to talk about taking apart the XML. Suffice it to say that we have a custom function that's publicly available, as well as uh, the use of that custom function, and that is in this script. Uh, if I go to the script workspace real quick, and I look at this script, uh, down here is where we actually uh, extract the data. And so this is the data extraction right here from the XML. Um, how and why this works and the custom function behind it once again is the topic of our other video. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this and you'll see it run to completion. And so what we have is that this system actually finds the proper section right here where this text section of XML is visible and it parses it apart and drops it here. And then of course we have one more calculation to take just that first word out and drop that into a number field. So we actually have the end result right here, which is a number field, which is what you would want to have in your solution. So in your final solution, you're going to have obviously some sort of origination address, a destination address, and then this number field right here. The rest of all this will be suppressed and be hidden, but it has to be there under the hood for it to work. So that's it for now. I'm Richard Carlton. Feel free to check out our XML video that digs into this at even a deeper level, which is a really powerful skill set to have. And once again, that's in our FileMaker Pro video training course. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time.